All right, everybody, this is Ross. So we're indoors now. Uh, we are doing part two now of the rooting process. So in the last video that we just put out on the rooting process, we talked about the soil, we talked about the mulch, we talked about the pots, the shapes, the sizes. Um, and we also talked about the bins because I'm storing them, I'm housing the pots in these hefty bins because we have um, a pretty large amount of cuttings in a very small space. And the way that I'm, I'm growing them is in these four by nine tree pots that allows the roots to grow downwards and to form um, a better root mass. So in that video, you guys can go back and, and watch that and um, see the details of that particular video. But this one here is really gonna focus on two main points, which is the method that we're choosing to use uh, because there's many methods of rooting fig cuttings. Uh, we're gonna use the direct potting method. And the other main point that we're gonna make here in this video is the use of parafilm. And why parafilm is an absolute must if you're growing fruit trees of any kind um, and how we're gonna be using it here on these fig cuttings. So we're gonna start this process for you guys before I do, I wanna show you, I've actually started the rooting process quite early, and you can see some of them are now starting to leaf out. Um, quite a bit, actually, are. And some of these I just started today, but we did a really early start on this, and the reason for that is because I took some cuttings that you guys may not necessarily want. You may not have wanted to receive them in the mail. Let's say you, you bought them from me. Maybe they were not that great in terms of their lignification. And I decided I'm gonna take some cuttings early and I'm going to um, essentially root them, right? Because if you guys aren't gonna want them, I think they're great. I'm gonna root them myself and actually they're already starting to leaf out. But in all honesty, that's not necessarily a good thing. And I'll get to the reasons why that is in a minute. But here actually is our, our cutting that we're going to be rooting. We have uh, four cuttings here of a particular variety. It's called uh, La Bourgeoisie. It's a French variety. And we're going to score the bottom. And I just really took these cuttings not too long ago. I'm going to zoom in here for you guys. Um, give me one second. I'm going to zoom in here. And, well, it's not going to necessarily work. We need more light in here. But essentially, guys, on the bottom of this cutting is actually it's been calloused over quite a bit, um, which is a good sign. You know, that's what we need. We need this process to start and to progress before the cutting will even put out roots at those points of callus. Now, we do also make sort of like a fresh cut here by scoring the bottom. This score at the bottom will also callus up over time. And therefore, I don't think it's really necessary too much to actually come in here and make a new cut on the bottom, especially if the cuttings were taken fresh um, and you want them, in a sense, to really not be all that fresh because you just need them in the fridge for a bit, uh, maybe like two or three weeks for that callus process to begin anyway. So let's say you make all these new cuts on here. You're going to have to wait maybe two or three weeks before any activity can occur. But if you start this callus process now in the fridge or you're just waiting around, um, you can really just speed this whole process up. And I think it's better because you'd, you'd rather have them in the right environment from the start rather than having them sit around for a while not really doing a whole lot. Um, and there's always that chance of rot. There's always that chance of, uh, of them drying out. So I'd rather have them, you know, off on the right foot from the beginning and not have to really delay anything. So what I'm using here is something called parafilm. And as I said, this is extremely, extremely important. What it does is, guys, it's a wax. You can buy this. Really, I have them listed on my Amazon storefront. I buy them in packs of six because I realize just how amazing this is for grafting, rooting, any sort of propagation. There's so many uses for it. 
just to keep really just to keep plants alive keep them uh to have that moisture that you'd want in the plant it's a wax and it will degrade in the sun over time it stretches so that's what you do you have to stretch it and then i spin the cutting which wraps it around stretch and wrap and this doesn't take a whole lot of time but what this does do as i said is prevents all that desiccation that would have occurred because this environment here that i have them rooting in this winter environment it's 33 percent humidity so that's a really low percentage and in all honesty if i don't have this cutting wrapped with parafilm i'm going to regret it this is going to dry off it's going to dry out whatever is above the soil will dry out and that wood will die the only thing left to do is just stick it in the soil and that's really really quite simple it's just we place it in the bottom of the pot just like that and we're done the last thing to do is actually to label it as I've labeled it there, which we can use something called a paint pen, which is really nice. Um, I think these also might be in my Amazon store. You can get them at AC Moore. I think they may not even be in business anymore, actually. I know the one near me closed, but um, any sort of arts and crafts or even just Walmart anywhere has them. But um, I think that's a really nice thing to even just label the cuttings as well label the pots label the cuttings don't forget that crucial step so now we did this rather quickly but there's a few things that really kind of make sense in this method here because we chose a method right the methods the direct potting method and as i said there's a number of different ways and methods to do this and some require more or less work there's more or less steps um so what I like to really think about when I choose any sort of um, technique that I'm doing, any sort of method, whatever it is, the simpler the method, the better. The less moving parts, the better. It's easier to master, it's easier to perfect, it's easier to have consistency. So if we're thinking about this in that sense, we need to simplify this as much as possible. That was rather simple, was it not? We score the bottom, wrap the cutting with parafilm, and then stick it in the soil. Um, I guess the depth of how far we stick it in the soil is really the only question, but essentially we wanna stick this cutting in all the way to the bottom of the pot and just give it about an inch or two of room. And you know, ideally what you need is just a couple nodes above the soil, maybe one or two above the soil. Some of these like that one there is only two. I'm sure one of these like that one here is only one. So, you only need a couple nodes above. Whatever's above is hopefully going to leaf out. Hopefully you have something healthy, a particular bud that maybe you've looked at on your cutting and said, well, this one has a good chance of leafing out, you know, or, or this one doesn't have a chance. So I'm going to leave maybe a couple more above the soil. And that just comes with experience. But whatever's below the soil has a chance to put out roots. So every single node, if this cutting here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, has nine nodes on it. So I could probably bury the majority of this except for maybe the top inch. And I could bury the rest of this. That's four nodes under the soil that not only can I have a chance of roots at where we scored it, where we also made the cut on the bottom but also at every single individual node. So the more nodes we can bury under the soil, the better. And that's sort of why I like this method so much is that we have a pot like this that's nice and long. It's nine inches long. They're also four inches wide, so I can fit a lot of them in a smaller space. Um, and then the cutting obviously fits the length of the pot. It's pretty much the perfect length if you think about what size cuttings we just take. And because we're using parafilm, our method here becomes a lot simpler as well. We're not using any humidity domes. When you use something like a humidity dome, you have to adjust the cuttings, the leaves, to the new humidity. Uh, let's say the humidity in the closet, like I said, or in this environment is 33%. 
in the humidity dome, it might be 90%. So that adjustment from 90 to 33% is extremely difficult and requires a lot of patience and a lot of practice. And you're adding a very difficult step, but otherwise you don't need it. You could spend a little bit of money here, spend a little bit of extra time, wrap the cuttings with this parafilm, and you immensely increase your consistency of success and the degree of your success. So that's a really key point. The other thing people like to do with these different methods that they have is that they'll root them in some other environment. Let's say they, I don't know, we, we root them in a, like a tray or something. So here's, I don't know, a pretty bad example, but here's a, you know, some soil I have here actually to start some seeds that I never did, but we could maybe even start them in these little trays here, or even lay them out horizontally, or we could start them in these little bags People like to use the, um, and I don't even remember the name of that, that method, but um, the fig, the fig something method, the, the uh, <laughs> it's like the fig cookie method or whatever the, whatever it's called. But basically you guys start them in these, in these bags like this, and then the top of it's sticking out. I don't remember guys. The point is, is that in a method like that, where we, we starting them out in something else other than the pot, like a one gallon size pot, we're eventually gonna to have to transplant them. And that transplanting process is again, further making this less simple, further complicating things, further making this less consistent. So if we just put them in the pot, the one gallon size pot from the beginning that we're gonna have them in for months, I'm gonna have these trees by the way, because today is, it's mid November so I'm gonna have them in here roughly until mid-April. Uh, mid so that is December, January, February, March, April. So that's five months. They're gonna be in these pots for five months. Now, ideally you have them in here for, let's say you could even go as low as two, depending on the cutting, but usually that's not a lot, that's not enough time. You need usually about three months in this environment in this indoor setup that I have for them to fully root themselves out, for them to harden themselves off. And then once they're in this one gallon size here and we take them out of this, we then can put them into any size we want. So we can put them in a five gallon, a 10 gallon, a 50 gallon, whatever it is you guys wanna do from this particular size. So why create this other step? Why put them in something that let's say is a third of a gallon or a half of a gallon or even less than that? and then transplant them into this size, there's absolutely no reason to do that. And yeah, so that's, that's really my thoughts there on the method and why I think this is so important to choose the right techniques from the beginning. Again, this is all for consistency, for simplification purposes. You know, it, it also just saves me a whole lot of time. Um, so anyway, guys, that was the, the video here for this episode of the rooting of the fig trees that we're gonna talk about. Again, we have a playlist on this whole thing from start to finish, multiple years, even bringing them outside. You guys can skip ahead, you can look back, you can follow along with what we're doing this year. Um, next week's episode or the next video on this particular topic is gonna to revolve around these lights. We'll talk about the lights for anyone that's interested. We're also gonna talk about the soil moisture in a future video. We'll talk about the feeding in a future video. But for now, this is it. All we have to do is let them sit here for a while. We have the right environment. We'll talk about the environment when we talk about these lights. And that's it. So the only thing left, really, that's so key at this point, maybe you guys are at this point already, the only thing left is the lights and the environment. If everything else is right, the soil, the mulch, the pots, the bins, the parafilm, scoring the bark, these lights and the environment, the temperature and the humidity in this room, everything else is, is perfect and you don't have to worry about this. Mother nature is gonna do its thing and you're gonna see these cuttings root out, you're gonna see them leaf out and you're already gonna be on your way to success. So yeah, stay tuned guys for the next ones. We'll see you soon. Take care.